Names, contacts, inventory lists. You have a, a wife, girlfriend? It's up to you how this goes. Because you know what I'm gonna do next? I'm gonna find her. Whoever she is, I'm gonna find her and I'm gonna hurt her. But I'm gonna make her bleed and cry and call out your name. And you're not gonna be able to do shit. You know why? What is it, Rabbit's Foot? Because you're gonna be this close to dead. And who is the buyer? And then I'm going to kill you right in front of her. Um, I was such a fan of his since I saw Scent of a Woman, which is so yeah, long ago. Right. And I sought him out, and I wanted, he was in my very first movie, and he was in Boogie Nights. And, and it's just amazing to watch someone who you, you, you were rooting for get to the point where you can now go to a studio and say, Philip Seymour Hoffman is in know. my movie. And, oh, and they know. You don't have to say... The guy from, you know, the sidekick friend, from, they know his name. And it's so great to me. And, it's, and he's an actor who deserves it, too, who's worked his ass off for a long time. I, I first saw Philip uh, Seymour Hoffman in Scent of a Woman, directed by Marty Brest. And I, well, I remember sitting in the theater and seeing that movie and just falling in love with Phil Hoffman. Like, fuck. Here's the thing. Hey, need the book tonight. Thanksgiving quiz, the big shit Preston in the morning. Whoever this guy is, I gotta have him. I gotta see him. I gotta know him. He's. I just. I gotta have this guy. You know, it's such an incredible performance. What the hell? Like I say, it was blurry. I got sober. Uh, I was 22 years old. Yeah. So this was drugs or alcohol or both. Ah. Uh, Yes, all, all that stuff. Yeah. Was <laughs> anything I can get my hands on? <laughs> you know, growing up as a kid, there was only one actor I ever wanted to work with. He was number one on my wish list. How are you? You know, you know. <laughs> Who's this? Eddie, this is Scotty J. He's a friend. He works on some of the films. Nice oh, to meet you. Yeah, me too. Uh, are you going to be working or? Um, maybe. Oh! Probably. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Cause how'd you meet Jack? Cause I work on the films, you know, sometimes. So if you ever after yeah. first seeing him in Who was it? I really couldn't tell you, sir. Um I thought I saw someone fooling with the lamppost. But by the time I had pulled focus, they were gone. Just like Paul Thomas Anderson, I was intrigued as to who he was. Then, when his face popped up in The Big Lebowski, <laughs> I was even more so. But then, when I saw this. Really great. You wanna go for a ride? Or? Wait, 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 fuck hell, how much time is that? I'm sorry, sir. What the hell is the matter with I'm you? I'm sorry. I'm... Let's go back inside, okay? All right, I'll, all right. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. Fucking idiot. Fucking idiot. Fucking idiot. I was sold. Can't tell you how much fun we had doing that film, all of us. Um, and then I just do all the internal work, which I always do, which is, you know, what's it like to just, you know, what, what's it like to obsess about somebody, you know? What's it like to want somebody so bad? What's it like to go through the day and not be able to think about anything else but this one person, you know? And, uh, and it, you just go from there and, and uh, see what happens. I'm proud of the choices we made there, and Paul was really was really helpful all the whole way through. He was cautious at first when I brought in what I did, and then and then we just nurtured it together, and we both remember after shooting it and seeing it, I remember going to him and saying, thank you for letting me do what I did, and I think we, we, did, we did right by this part you wrote. This was an immense actor with such range. More than anything, he was believable. I know he's my friend, but I have to say there's just nothing he can't, can't do. I just, I feel so lucky to have met Phil and hooked up with him, you know, I'm, I can't remember 
you know, growing up, all I wanted to do was make films. You sort of imagine yourself on the set making movies with, a, you know, a camera and lights. And you sort of imagine as a kid you're going to be sort of, I don't know, making westerns outside. Never in my fantasy did I see anybody that looked like Phil Hoffman being a part of that picture. But here we are, and somewhere along the way I found this actor who I just think can do anything and I is capable of so much that you can throw anything at him. Whether he was playing a student, a boom operator, a gambler, a PA, a confused writer, a cult leader, or simply the guy next door. The intensity he would bring to a role was unmatched. Person, you have no right taking people's confidence in your service. You understand me, sir? You're sick. No, no, no. Shut up! Shut the fuck up! You have up! no right to take people's Shut control. up! Will you shut up? Shut up! Shut, 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 shut up! Shut up! Actors typically have a gimmick, or they're simply dashing. With Hoffman, you got the sense of everything being left on the screen. No bars held. I don't know, do you, do you want me to? For his Oscar-winning role in Capote, he significantly lost weight and changed his voice. I mean, any subject in the world... Don't worry whether it'll interest me or not. Just talk. So I won't break down. He couldn't bear to be alone with his thoughts. It was too painful. And um, they're not celebrities to me. You know, Philip was the first one of my generation to be a fully actualized actor artist, you know? Mm -hmm. He, he had something to say with his work, with his theater company, with the choices he made, with the way he carried himself in the world. You know, he was a very serious person. I mean, it didn't come for free. You know, I, I worked with Philip Seymour Hoffman. It didn't come for free. You don't drink? No, I don't. In fact, you went into rehab at a fairly early age. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I did. I did. I went. Uh, I got sober. Uh, I was 22 years old. Yeah. So this was drugs or alcohol or both. Uh, yes, yeah, all, all that stuff. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't get my hands up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I liked it all. Yeah. And why did you decide to stop? You get panicked. You get panicked. It was, um, I was 22 and I got panicked for my life. It really was. It was just that. You know, I don't want to sound too dramatic and I don't want to make more out of it than it was, but I definitely was, whatever I was doing made me worry uh, if I was going to be able to do the things I wanted to do with my life. And the Oscar goes to Philip Seymour Hoffman and Capote. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Philip Seymour Hoffman. His big screen break was in Boogie Nights. During his 36 days filming Capote, even in between shots and during breaks, Hoffman tried to stay in character vocally and physically. Growing up and seeing him go from bit part roles in various films to best character actor of scene to Oscar winner was emotional. Uh, a category of some great, great, great actors. Uh, Fantastic actors, and um, and I'm overwhelmed. Uh, I'm really overwhelmed. Um, I would like to thank Bill Vince and Caroline Barron and uh, Danny Rosette. Uh, the film wouldn't have happened without them. I'd like to thank uh, Sarah Fargo. I'd like to thank Sarah Murphy. I'd like to thank Emily Ziff. My friends, my friends, my friends. Uh, I'd like to thank Bennett Miller and Danny Futterman, who I love, I love, I love, I love, I love. Uh, you know the Van Morrison song, I love, I love, I love, and he keeps repeating it like that. Um, and, um, and I'd like to thank Tom Bernard and uh, Michael Barker, thank you so much. And, uh, and my, my, my mom's name is Marilyn O'Connor, and she's here tonight. And uh, I'd like, if you see her tonight, to congratulate her. Uh, because uh, she brought up four kids alone, and, uh, and she deserves a congratulations for that. And, um,
<laughs> uh, we're at the party, Ma, you know? Um, and uh, she took me to my first play, and she stayed up with me and watched the NCAA uh, Final Four. And uh, my passions, her passions became my passions. And, uh, you know, be proud, Mom, because I'm proud of you, and we're here tonight. And <laughs> it's so good. Thank you. The tragic death of actor Philip Seymour Hoffman, a performer who was known for his extraordinary range, he was also known for his honesty about the struggles he faced away from the public eye. So when I first heard of his passing in 2014, it hit me hard. Last November, seen smiling at the opening of the second Hunger Games movie, he was just preparing now to film the third installment. From a selfish point of view, the only actor I ever dreamt of working with was gone. The night he won the Oscar for Best Actor for his role in Capote, singling out his mother. And from an objective point of view, one of the greatest actors was gone. But his legacy lives on from his incredible filmography. Fuck! Did you just say, go fuck myself? Yes, I did. That wasn't good! You were dead! And his son Cooper, who appeared in Paul Thomas Anderson's licorice pizza. Do you know who I am? Yeah. Do you know uh, who my girlfriend is? Barbara Streisand? Barbara Streisand. Sand. Sand, yeah, like sands, like the ocean, like beaches. Barbara Streisand? No, like Streisand. Sand. Streisand. Streisand. Hey, this is Dean Trumbull for The Mattress Man. Give me a call at 370-0466. For limited time only, d, d Mattress has queen mattress sets for $99 and king set for $129. Shit. Uh, oh, yeah. Shit, man, are you OK? Uh, I was afraid that was going to happen. Uh, I was afraid that was going to happen with that goddamn thing. He's all right. He's wearing, he's wearing leather. Fucked okay. up my guitar, though. Did you get it on film? Never before has an actor given me chills like he did in just these few seconds. Do you know what I'm going to do next? I'm going to find her. Whoever she is, I'm going to find her and I'm going to hurt her. It was like he wasn't even acting. And that was the beauty of Hoffman. He was never acting. One of the main things I love about the career of Philip Seymour Hoffman is that he got his flowers, he got his Oscars, he got his awards. He had numerous actors who were idolizing him. Some actors didn't get the chance to have that notoriety. Some actors simply went by the wayside. And when you're a character actor, I feel like the role is almost impossible. You have to blend into various different characters. And most of the time, you end up being the person who people refer to as the guy or the girl from that film who was in that role, who did the thing. And it, it's really not always rewarding in terms of notoriety. But character actors know that. They know that that's their responsibility of sorts. And with Philip Seymour Hoffman, yes, he was a wonderful character actor, maybe the best I've seen. But don't let that fool you. He was also an amazing leading man as well, and very, very believable. Listen, if you're not subscribed yet, please do. I'd love you to do so. We're nearly on 3,000 subscribers. We're growing at a really fast pace, thanks to you. And if you watch the video and you haven't subscribed yet, please pause the video, hit the subscribe button, and then watch the rest of the video. There's not much left. It's literally just me saying to you, thank you very much. And if you can comment, leave a like, share, that would be amazing as well. And until we speak again, big love. Let me show you exactly death, how Phil will do it. Routine. It'll go like this. It'll be like, Some the, thing that you've just, the thing that you've decided to do is that he's going to walk over to the cigar box and, you know, the little leather case there, and he's just going to go like that with it. And here's, here's how it'll go when Phil does it. Watch this. I can't wait to see this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Mm. I'm sorry, Frank. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that was my Phil Hoffman impersonation. That was pretty good, actually. <laughs>